I'm here with the GL2400 Allen & Heath and on this Allen & Heath GL2400 we have a little switch right here and as you can see it says auxiliary 6 auxiliary feed to the sub okay and I've got it pushed down so what that means is that this is going to be split off or Y over to this right here if I run something into this subwoofer and I have this button pushed in I will not be able to have any mix control with this fader okay so I'm gonna let this leave that up and that'll allow me to control what's being fed to the sub and what that will do when you run it this way and the board was designed for that as an option is it will remove low frequencies uh, from uh, any type of rumble coming from bass guitar, keys, uh, acoustic guitars, and the four vocal mics. You have a lot of potential for summation problems. So if I, if, if I don't send any of this through to the subwoofer and now that I have independent control, then I'm, not, I'm going to be able to turn up the low frequencies on the voice if I need it or any other instrument without worrying about it bringing any noise into the venue, okay? And I can give more priority to the recording, more preference to the recording. So these changes, I'm anticipating uh, a higher quality of recording and a higher quality mix in the house. If you ever have an opportunity and you have like a subwoofer and you, and you want to see how noisy this can be, turn up all your microphones and all your guitar amps or your, uh, your piano, your acoustic guitars, and go listen to that subwoofer. Listen to the noise that's coming through there, okay? Because none of these instruments are going to be fed to uh, auxiliary six, I'm not going to have any rumble from the piano. I'm not going to have any rumble from the gu acoustic guitar. I'm not going to have any rumble across four microphones. And when you eliminate that, you're eliminating the summation factor. And here's how the summation factor works. I got two vocal mics right here. When I bring those in on that subwoofer, even though I'm not my the fundamental of those vocals is way up above sub, the sub frequencies. I'm turning up three decibels of noise in that subwoofer. And if I add, now go from two to four, I turn it up another three decibels. That's six decibels of noise coming into to that subwoofer just off these vocal mics. Now when you, when you add in from that, the factor of the bass guitar going through the subwoofer and then room ambience coming back into those microphones, you've got a train wreck of noise right there, okay? So uh, a way to eliminate that is to use this monitor mix. It's also, you know, it's a part of the monitor system. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the way this board is designed, they allow you to only route those instruments that you absolutely designate for your subwoofer. And so that's going to that's gonna make a, a high definition clarity in the low end. It's going to clean up the monitor mix. It's going to clean up the recording, okay? So that's one of the other things that I do that, uh, that's going to be implemented going forward. And when you do that, if I am using a uh, equalizer here, and I do this, uh, I implement this change, that equalizer will not have any influence on this independent sand going to the subwoofer. Okay? So that's kind of an important thing to consider because low frequencies desperately need EQ and they desperately need compression or limiting to get them to have support so that they're a lot tighter. Now the other thing that I'm going to do on the other uh, auxiliary which is number five is I'm going to have that as my reverb and I, let's say I've got three backup vocals right here and I've got some reverb here's my reverb and I got a nice reverb mix and I'm over here mixing these voices having this button up I'll be able to control both the reverb as well as the the original signal I took this EV microphone and a pair of headphones and I was listening to the quality of this EQ and the quality of what you can do to bring out a cleaner and higher fidelity in the high frequencies and I found what I believe to be a really nice tone getting, to get out of the vocals. And I want to get a little bit more sizzle. But when you start bringing up these shelving, you start getting potential for harshness. And so I counteracted the high mids 
around 4K or 3K. I brought 3 and 4K back uh, a little bit and I turned up the high end at 12K. And that is a high quality, high frequency. And I can't wait to hear what that sounds like on the recording. Because what I'm doing now is setting up for tracking, giving this EQ priority in the tracking to get the highest quality trackings I can, I can achieve going out, going out the matrix for recording. And then I will adjust the house a EQ for the venue, okay? As opposed to setting the EQ for the house and then just, you know, the recording being secondary. Well, with this recording, having the opportunity to take a microphone and go in, listen very carefully with headphones as, as to how my voice is being changed by this EQ, I found a really nice high frequency that I believe is going to bring in a lot greater clarity. Okay, we're looking at the reverb section. I've got a boost at 3K on the reverb, and I'm backing off some of the high frequencies. That frequency that I'm boosting the reverb at is the same frequency I'm cutting it out over here on the vocals. That should clarify the vocals without having the reverb create summation issues. In other words, it's going to be it's going to be inserted into a frequency that has been carved out especially for it. The way I organize the recording, I have the drum and bass on channel one or submix one, I have the guitar and piano on two, and I have the backup vocals on three, and the lead vocals on four. At any given point in the show, the lead vocalist is going to change. It could be vocalist one, vocalist two, vocalist three, vocalist four, and the way I separate them over onto submix four is you can see that three and four button is pushed all the way across on all of these and everything else is up and all I have to do to route that like if it's vocalist number three I would just turn him all the way over to the right and then what that does is it keeps that vocalist onto a separate vocal track so that when I do my mix down I'll have complete control over that lead vocalist and that's basically what I want to set myself up for is for the mix down uh, for the live recording. So I put a dry erase marker on Velcro and I stuck it right here to some white tape and this is all dry erase marker that can be changed. That's one way to make it versatile. How to properly set up your subs leading to your mix. If I'm over here on my drum channels and I want my drums to be on submix one. I would push the one two button. I would make sure that three and four is up. I would make sure that right and left is up. And if I wanted to go to sub one, I'm going to turn these to the left so that they're be so that they're on to the left. Okay, and that the left turning of this knob corresponds to the first number of one right there. Okay, and then so these two right now are routed to sub one. Now, the next thing I need to do is make sure that this sub is routed over to the right and left. So I'm going to push this group one right and left. And I would have to do that to all of them. And in this short video, I'm going to explain how I set EQ and this is something that a lot of experienced engineers do and it's a very effective way of determining bad spots in any instrument with the EQ. And what you do is you take, you take the volume of one of these mid frequencies. Right here we got two different mid uh, frequency semi-parametrics that we can use. The volume of this frequency is turned all the way up and then I would start all the way over here to the left at 500 hertz and I would sweep the frequency all the way over to the right and I would listen for what I would call a harsh uh, shrill annoying tone and you would sweep it back and forth you could do it several times until you find a spot that has a harsh annoying shrill tone and then you can take it back a little bit and as you bring it back, bring it 
past the point where it's too much and to bring it back up to where you've neutralized it and just keep going back and forth until you find on several passes the appropriate amount you want to cut out. And you do the same thing for your low frequencies. I turn this all the way up, start with it all the way to the left, so you can see how my volume, this is the level, is all the way up, and my frequency is starting at 35 hertz, and then I would, starting with it all the way to the left, I would turn it all the way over to the right, listening for an annoying frequency that sounds worse than any other frequency, okay? Because as you do your pass, you'll notice that there will, some of the frequencies will stick out and they will sound good to your ear. And those ones you want to keep in, but as you do your pass, there will come a point where you'll find something that is extremely annoying. And that's where, you, like say for example, if this becomes the worst sounding, most annoying frequency, then that's where I would want to make the cut. And again, just like I did with the last one, I'm starting at... A normalized position cutting it all the way to minus 15 and going back to flat cutting it all the way to minus 15 and as you pass through a specific area where it's ideal you'll start to consciously be aware that hey with as I come past this area I'm liking that better than having it full off or just a little bit back and you'll start to uh, develop this uh, sense of awareness that there's a point at which it's the right amount to cut. Okay, just because you find a bad frequency doesn't mean you have to eliminate all of it. Okay, so that's how I do my setting for my frequency uh, on the EQ for the most part. Uh, there are exceptions, and that is when you're doing dealing with vocals. You might want to have some sizzle at the top, and the sizzle comes in when you add up at, at the shelving point, and then you might want to cut some of the undertones or the frequencies that are brought up with that shelving frequency that are unwanted. Like right here, um, as I brought the shelving up, it also brought up some shrillness in the frequencies just under that, around 3K, so I cut that back. And it, it allows me to have a nice, uh, I would call it a kind of a, lot of a little bit of a sizzle at the high end and brings out the sibilance really clean. And, I, and it sounds really nice. So that's kind of an exception to the frequency sweeping. Um, and let's see, that's about all I have. I, I basically use that frequency uh, EQ technique on every instrument. Um, and that's, it's one way of finding the proper EQ setting. Um, but you can also... Uh, do it the opposite way. Go, you know, instead of finding the the bad frequency they want to cut, you can also find a frequency that, if added, makes it sound good. For example, in the low frequencies, like say you have a cajon or a kick drum, you may find that by boosting at 80 hertz and cutting at 100 hertz on this uh, roll off gives you uh, a really nice tone down there, okay? And when you find something like that, that would be an exception to the rule of that sweep, sweep frequency where you do the cutout. But more often than not, I'll do the same thing with the drums. I'll take, like, say, for example, a kick drum. I would take this, uh, this volume, I would turn it all the way up to the top, all the way to the right, and I would begin my sweep frequency by starting all the way to the left and panning across, turning it all the way up, listening for the most atrocious frequency as I pass through it that is the most annoying, non-musical, train wreck of a frequency, and then I will take my volume and back it off, starting from the, the midpoint, going back, and I'm going to pass through a point to where I've taken out too much, or I've not taken out enough, and I keep going back and forth, until I double, triple, and quadruple check that position and say, yes, that is the appropriate amount to be taken, okay? And that being too much, and that being not enough, okay? And that's how precise you need to be on setting your EQ. And when you, when you have that uh, amount of attention to detail, you're going to start to have 
some highly uh, professional sounding mixes. So it's not enough to just mix it. You've got to be able to put these uh, instruments in the proper frequencies so that they interact with each other uh, properly. And that's all I have for how to set EQ.